check, check, check. Is that better? It claims to be better. It says it's tedding. Oh, but no. Is that better? Okay. Cool. Hello, and welcome to the People's Housing Project stream. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we are a grassroots group that builds emergency shelters for homeless folks. Uh, and we combine that with, like, politely and respectfully lobbying at the government, so yelling at them to invest in a housing first approach that includes mental health and addiction treatment. Um, if you want to support us here on Twitch, definitely uh, follow our channel so you can keep up with us live. And if you want to support our work, uh, you can check out the links in our bio. Um, let's see, so what is happening today? Cool. So today we are playing Victoria 3 again. Uh, today I am Spain and I'm going to be talking about um, John Mufawad Paul's book, uh, a, co uh, a political or politics in command. It's a political taxonomy of economism. Um, so JM, Peter, my notes. I actually, played, I actually took notes today, like a winner. Um, so JMP is basically a, he is a Canadian Maoist. Uh, he does philosophical work on uh, Maoism and basically, uh, so yeah, he's a philosopher who talks, he's a Maoist philosopher um, based out of Canada. And his big, uh, the whole point of this book is basically to do a philosophical examination of a phenomenon and philosophy or like I guess really more like a political position known as economism um, so what is economism so it's basically so for JMP he defines economism on two levels right um, and then I'm going to be talking about how Victoria 3 and the ways in which the game embody or reflect oh well if you want to declare okay so rather we were improving relations with france but now if they want to start a rivalry then fuck them we can start a rivalry with france over algeria and morocco how fucked up are our soldiers um yeah, so for John Mufawad Paul, he talks about how economism is basically um, two things. It's an objective phenomena that looks at like, or it's an object, it's a perspective on the objective reality that basically says that like the development of the economy and the means of production, like the real stuff and the technology to produce it. Well, fuck you, America is what drives uh, the world forward, right? Um, so yeah, we're just gonna, we're trying to shore up, right now we're doing diplomacy throughout Europe to try to shore up friends, given that we're shit fighting with France. We're probably gonna be shit fighting with France and America soon. Um, so economism as an objective perspective is basically the idea that the means of production don't advance unless or excuse me that the advances and the means of production are kind of what determine reality right so much more than any uh individual person's like interests in like interests or beliefs it's like you can only get as far as the means of production so in classic socialist philosophy like this is traditionally meant that like um, in classical socialist philosophy, this is traditionally meant that like a revolution, the possibility of a revolution is precluded until the means of production advance to a certain point, right? Um, it's this idea of like economic determinism. So like what's happening in the economy and in the material, re like what's happening technologically and in the economy determines the limits of the possible. Um, So part of the problem is that like economism is like a series of presumptions, right? It's not like its own independent philosophical position. There's nobody running around being like, yes, we are promoting an economistic understanding of Marxism um, or an economistic understanding of reality, right? But 
it's so for JMP, it's really more of a series of like presumptions and then its activity is like the practical result of certain theoretical assumptions. Because if you believe that the means of production are what control the advances of political reality, you end up with this set of assumptions that like, society can only move forward as quickly as technology is and if P or as quickly as the means of production have advanced and as quickly as they've been organized by material society, and if there isn't a revolution yet, it's like, well, hey, maybe the means of production haven't been advanced enough, right? So one of the things I think is interesting about this game is that it ends up inadvertently kind of promoting this under... Oh, shit. I have not been paying any kind of attention at all. So now there's a revolution popping off, and you'll have that. So we need to activate all of our conscripts and mobilize all of our army. So yeah, so I accidentally started a civil war because I'm trying to ban slavery and I'm pretty sure it radicalized the aristocrats who want to keep slavery. Yeah, that's probably what happened because I wasn't fucking paying attention. Whoops. Oh well. Alright, so now we're fighting a civil war against slaveholders because that's what you do when slave owners show up. Um, okay, well we'll see how this goes. Hopefully this war will go all right. Um, so yeah, this is a classic example. So right, the fact that the Civil War is happening over attempts to ban slavery is like a classic example of how like, if you don't believe that like politics can change the means of production, it's basically like, well, hey, slavery is going to eventually evolve itself or devolve itself away. And there's no evidence for that. Like the evidence in all of world history Yep. See, we succeeded in banning slavery, which is dope, because the trade unions like it, the landowners hate it, this ends discrimination of all the laborers, yeah, this ends slavery, which is excellent. What's up, Joe Rock? Kapow, slavery ended, yeah. So now we're trying to fight a civil war, though, against the aristocrats who want to bring it back, so that's fun. Um, how you doing, Joe Ra? How is life? yeah no that's I mean that's kind of how yeah that's how shit went especially at this time and age um, so yeah so like at any point you can put politics in command and attempt to ban slavery and whether the like means of production are ready for it or not you can just kind of do shit like that um, and if you don't believe that like human will and human voluntary effort can change reality and can fundamentally shift the means of production you end up without a vision of revolution we're running low on money thanks to the civil war so we kind of need to tax stuff we'll tax luxury green we'll tax luxury furniture no, the Civil War is going to be a pain in the ass. Can anybody, can I bribe anybody to come help Portugal? Oh, they owe an obligation, so we're going to make Portugal come help, which will be dope. Okay. Nice. So thankfully, so hopefully Portugal, all right, so hopefully between Portugal and I will be able to crush the fucking slave owners and win this rebellion. Um... So the subjective, uh, the subjective version of economism, right, is focusing too much, or is basically prioritizing, uh, the audio going? It's basically prioritizing the um, economic struggle. basically prioritizing the economic struggle to the exclusion of other struggles, right? So even though in America there's like major racism, sexism, and homophobia problems, it's this idea that you can get to some kind of like pure or neutral class struggle that isn't like contaminated by these other struggles, right? And the truth is that's fucking silly and backwards because... Uh, one of the things that JMP makes really clear in this book is that, like, 
the economy or like class position is not something that's like purely determined economically, right? Like just because you're two arms, just because you're in this like lower strata, right? Just because you're in this like lower strata of people doesn't mean that you're like part of a Hamat, like and you have certain economic needs and that are all in common doesn't mean that you're not like politically determined by your different interests, right? Because some of those poor people are like rural and some of those poor people are trade unions, right? Some of those poor people are like petty bourgeoisie, so even though they have like a middle class interest that theoretically should put them against the like church and the landowners. Oh, I guess the landowners are pissed off and left the government because we took their slaves away, which is fine. They don't fucking deserve them anyway. Let's bring those guys into the law. Let's bring those guys into government. We have professional army. What do we want? Can we ink? Yeah. Who's gonna hate that? Fuck the landowners. They're already out. Let's fuck it. Raise taxes on the rich. So yeah, we're fighting a fucking civil war over here against the fucking wealthy. Gunning them down. Which is pretty sweet. We should be able to win this war. They have fewer guys than us. We have Portugal helping. Yeah, they have fewer guys than us and Portugal's helping. How have you been, Jora? How is life? Is the audio playing? Or is it... Is the audio playing? Is there audio playing? Is the music playing? Yeah, the music should be playing. Okay, cool. You have a headache? That's fucking stupid. Why do you have a headache? Is there anything I can do to make you feel better? Is this music soothing you at all? Hardwood. Import wood, which is fine. Alright. We're taking their land because we're bogging them down in wars on these fronts soldiers flank them. Where is their capital? Can I... Yeah, no, their capital's mostly conquered. I can send an assassin to your home. Thanks, Jora. Um, <laughs> I would prefer to not... I would prefer to not murder you because I like having you around and I enjoy your company, but I mean, if you really... If you really want to die, I can Google assassins. Do they sell them? Do they do they have those? Can I order one off like DoorDash? Do they have like DoorDash assassins yet? Just like hire a hitman. Okay, so we're having artillery shortages, tool shortages. That's fine. Okay, how long until this fucking war is over? God damn. Because they're like popped open everywhere. They're like sixty percent occupied. I have a hundred percent of my Okay. So they, because they failed you from Microsoft, Google Assassins. See, that's what we need. We need, like, Google Assassins and Assassin Delivery straight to your door. That would actually be pretty sweet. Okay. Alright, this war is going really well. So yeah, so what is, that's actually a good question, what is Maoism? Um, and like why, why attach an ism to like the Marxism when it's already like out of vogue, right? And it's like, or not cool. Um, and I think part of the idea is that like, Marxism has a long theoretical history. There's like a history of struggle, there's like a philosophy of how you resist the state. 
Maoism is when men on the internet hate having fun. Yeah, a lot of internet Maoism is exactly that, Joe Ra. It's very, like... <laughs> very reductive like there's a lot of like twitter marxism that just seems very silly and like i've actually been talking to some of the homies who are in this reading group where i got this book from of like why is it that so much of the left is like a do nothing left when marxism supposed to be like a practical project right that like i don't know toledo's do i have any tool factory Twitter Maoism is like you can be one type of man or a trad wife or read through. And you know what's fucked up about the trad wife thing is like Mao is the one who's like yeah exactly like Mao is the one who's like women hold up half the sky and was a big believer in like feminism being a key part of the Chinese revolution because it was pretty clear that it was like impossible to build a whole collective societal revolution when women don't want to fucking be part of it you know what i mean um yeah no internet maoists are t are typically very useless they're very uh oh okay no that's oh, that's something else okay what the which little button do you have a little button that says women hold up half the sky I do it's, oh you should definitely should it sounds extremely cute um <laughs> yeah no it is absolutely a mao quote um and it's one of mao's like real famous quotes and it's like one of the ones that like even leftists who are like not the biggest fans of mao like to quote because it's a fucking great quote Yeah, so it is basically like, so it's basically the idea that we should take, ooh, death and taxes, somebody should, uh, somebody died, add to time, but improve chance, sure. I really want that to pass so we can have more money. And he would know, he had six wives. Yes, he did. Mao had quite a few wives. Um, oh, thank God. Okay, so we got our tooling work. tools where was tools getting made he did have six wives over the course of his lifetime um yeah and definitely okay so morocco can i like attack you or what can i not attack you oh, i need to declare neutrality in this fucking thing because they're trying to subjugate morocco Yes, Joe, that's a good question, Jorah. What is stopping you from having six wives? Fucking time. Because Mao didn't have them all at once. Mao had them over the course of, like, his entire lifetime. Uh, and definitely probably could have been better and cooler as a husband. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, what are we doing here? Let's promote the encourage the manufacturing industry. Logging camps going, which is good. We got iron mines going, which is good. What's expensive on the Spanish market? Groceries, porcelain, opium, and wood. Okay. Groceries. Do we have a glass maker? Where does fucking porcelain? What is stopping me is I can't talk to trans girls. I get nervous. Big gay. And I can have no more cis wives. Yeah. I mean, as cis people, it's... We're definitely part of... As cis people, we're definitely part of the problem. Um, or are the problem, depending on how you look at it. Um, silk. Why do we have room for a silk plantation? Is 
long as you share. <laughs> Hashtag people's housing polycule. show called Six Cis Wives. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know that I would watch that. Uh, let's close a bunch. Let's get rid of all our unproductive traits. Too gay and not gay enough for this discourse. I know what you mean, Zaf. What, what a good question. Why are we building cover? Oh my god. Oh, I inherited this the fucking enemy construction cube. Whoops. Under Maoism, how gay is too gay? Well, in theory, like there's no such thing because that's like one of the things he goes on to talk about later is like because class is like socially constructed right like there's a difference between your like objective class position in relation to the economy and your like class consciousness and like class position which is why like so many of the like most organ and it's like part of the whole point of this book is like the reason why the most organized and like highest paid union workers don't end up revolutionary because the people who end up with a revolutionary consciousness who are aware that like if civilization's going to survive and like combat climate change and achieve equal rights and like stop fascism we're going to have to have like uh, a, a fundamental revolution in the means of production and like a communist overthrow of the capitalist economy right so like the people who are the most revolutionary are the people who have nothing to lose but their chains which I think is why you see so many queer people and people of color in leftist spaces because we're like what's the word I'm looking for here because we're like more likely to be oppressed in other ways and be conscious of the fact that this system doesn't serve us and it's much easier for people in a queer and colored position to end up as revolutionary subjects who want to overthrow society um, for jmp one of the differences between um, Is this popular? God damn it. Can we just get fucking per capita taxation? Uh, okay, so the, one of the ways this game's promote, one of the ways this fucking game promotes an economistic understanding of reality is that, like, you need more money to build more stuff, and, like, there's no, re like, I mean, I guess there's, like, revolutionary shortcuts to fucking getting stuff done, but it's very hard to trigger positive revolutions or progressive revolutions by passing progre by passing laws, because every country st in this fucking time period starts out so goddamn reactionary that there's, like... 
all the laws you can fucking pass and all the political will that you can exercise is to make society more progressive. So the rebellions that you end up fucking dealing with... I'm going to speed it up a little bit. So the rebellions you end up fucking dealing with are much more likely to be conservative in nature. All right, Morocco's still fighting the Ottoman Empire, so we can't attack them yet. France has got an interest in Algeria. Actually, let's begin improving relationships in Algeria. Was Mao a twink? I, I don't know. I feel like young Mao def I don't know, honestly. It <laughs> Jora, I don't know if I'm fucking... I think I'm too straight to answer that question. I know in his, like, 70s, Mao swam across a river to prove that he was still, like, strong even though he was old. And it was, like, a symbol of, like, the strength of the Chinese people or something. So, I don't know. It seems like it's very... Not it seems like it's very not twink energy. Is that big twink energy? See, there you go. I don't know. Shows how much I fucking know, Jora. Jora, what is what is big twink energy? Zave, if you're there, I need you to weigh in on this discourse because I am entirely too straight for it. Ba ba ba. Thought and action. The armed forces is dissatisfied with the inclusion of the intelligentsia. Respect the soldiers who protect your right to pontificate. Shut the fuck up and do what soldiers do best. The nation needs back. Yeah, I can afford the afford that fucking authority hit. It's fine. I don't want to piss off either of them. Be nice if we could keep people happy, given that we just had a whole civil war against the slave owners. But we banned slavery, so that's cool. So hopefully that'll boost our GDP because people who are slaves don't get paid money and can't buy stuff. And if you want to keep the economy growing, you need people who can buy stuff. Expensive military goods. Okay. So one of the things they changed in the new patch that I think is very interesting is they added a private construction queue which is basically where the AI builds stuff, rather than the investment pool going into your treasury and you spending out of it on certain stuff, the AI spends it for you to simulate private capital. So whenever there's shortages in the market, if it takes some of your construction capacity and starts building uh, and builds other stuff to try to fill holes in your market, right? So there we go. That's pretty sweet. So now we can build more construction centers. Let's lower the speed just a little bit. Ba bam When she fills a hole in my market, right? <laughs> Thank you for that, Jorah. <laughs> that was beautiful. That was a beautiful, beautiful addition to the discourse. Alright. Whenever Morocco's done with this war, because it looks like they're going to beat the Ottomans thanks to Spain's or fucking France's help. Oh no! The landowners are back! Alright, let's suppress you. Let's I can't bolster the capital I suck out of authority because I gave a bunch of authority away. Okay, so how do we break down the authority of the Catholic Church? Oh, they're going to be pissed off. Okay, can we break it down other ways? Yeah, who doesn't like it? Okay, I don't care what the landowners think. Actually, wealth voting would be pretty good because then that could boost everybody else and then we can use that to go after the church which will be great oh it's always the damn catholics well it really is too and especially when it's like they're not super helpful at this point because they're like you know charity hospitals and religious like strongly endorse strongly oppose multiculturalism endorse national supremacy endorse state religion endorse monarchy and theocracy opposed to the rights of women opposed to free speech it's like 
they're actively a problem. And see, we were able to disempower and crush the landowners because they lost that fucking civil war over slavery. But if we're going to beat the church, it's going to require... If we're going to depower the church, it's going to take longer than that. So honestly, we could buff our authority there and lower taxes there. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah, one of the things I found really valuable about this book is this understanding of class position as like an intersection of interests, right? Because it's not enough to just be a peasant or a laborer. Because like, you know, this is like 3.4 million people and they're not all split up into the same political factions. And like, one of the things that this game does is it's like, it models the difference between fucking population and political strength, right? So you get this like visualized sense of the way that society works and this kind of mentality is really helpful and useful for visualizing and conceiving of the way that political power is fucking dispersed in modern society, right? Because we don't really have landed aristocrats in today's world the vast majority of the political strength is held by the fucking capitalists. Um, the people who own the factories and shit, because that's what our class society and our class structures have reduced them to. Um, so for JMP, rather than be a joyless Twitter Maoist, um, one of the things that he talks about is like how important it is to take identity struggles and like, for example, in the United States, like the way that class is created through a racialized lens and it almost doesn't really make sense to talk about class in America without talking about the way that class is a racialized factor or is racialized and like the way that like because white people and whiteness have been given traditional privileges under this society even though there are white people in the working class they end up with a class interest that's fundamentally opposed to black liberation or socialism, right? Because they can hold on to these crumbs of power that they have through whiteness. And because they can achieve a higher class position through their whiteness, right? Like, all right, we're already, all right, we have damaged relations with France enough. Can we build up with Piedmont Sardinia? Yes, let's do that. Um, uh, the same thing with men and patriarchy, right? Like, when you have a... Let's go wealth voting. Damn it. All right. So, yeah, yeah, fucking armed forces. Okay. Um, identity formation. Yeah, so rather than, like, identity being... Yeah, so, like rather than identity like doing like the old school or conservative or quite frankly fucking awful marxist take of like oh identity struggles and like feminism are in the way of fucking a pure class struggle it's like his point is that there's no such thing as a pure class struggle class struggle is always mediated by the other oppressions in a country and it's always like formed by the specific contradictions of that country so like for PHP's work, like when we're looking at, um, yeah, fuck it, is Morocco done with this goddamn war yet? Okay, no, but France is, what is France's war exhaustion? France hates us, it's fine, all right, you know what, let's try to make Morocco, let's try to puppet Morocco. Maybe we'll have to go to war with fucking France over it, but it's fine. Scripts. All right, so we're gonna try to conquer Morocco. Cool. Uh, so one of the things I think is really interesting from like an overlap standpoint is like, because one of his points in this book is that like rather than have an economistic or de economically determined understanding of reality, we should 
be working to put politics in command and really like advance a communist perspective on society and have a strong revolutionary and political perspective and use that to intervene in struggles um, which is something we've done at PHP by like applying Marxist dialectics to the like the housing crisis here okay France size of Morocco so you're fucking what's gonna happen okay so you're gonna have to defend there as a view we're hold that down uh, bu, 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 bu. can we recruit anybody into helping us Honestly, our strategy in this war is going to be to try to... Yeah, fuck the Catholic Church. Their approval. Don't fucking need it, don't want it. Alright, we're about to go to war, so let's raise taxes. Because this is probably going to be expansive. Having shortages of artillery and small arms. So where are battalions? So we're going to go to war with Morocco here, and we're going to use this like little bitsy of Morocco that we own to push on them. And France is going to help them, but France is already tied up in the fucking war with the Ottomans in Morocco. So that'll be hopefully taking advantage of their disorganization and then using our like defensive line at the Pyrenees to hopefully hold them. And then can I set you as the strategic objective? Okay, yes I can. So these guys, when they attack, that's the thing they added in the new update, is so rather than just like blindly push along the front, you can set strategic targets. So we're going to try to take their capital so that way the Ottomans don't win this goddamn war. artillery come from? Isn't it an arms factory? Okay, I could build another one of those right here. Yeah, let's build another one of those. Oh, because part of the problem is we don't have artillery shortages until the war, and then we have to pay for all of them. God damn it. Oh, that's pretty good. As France attempts to attack up here, and we hope that as France attempts to attack up there, we can like stall them out on these fucking mountains and shit through good defense. We'll see though. This is not ideal. Because they're also much more down to fucking throw down because they're right next to me. Oh, this might be a bloodbath. This might have been a bad choice, but oh well. So we now have wealth voting, which is good. So now we have elections over the monarchy. Trade routes are unproductive. Okay, well, we're not trading with France anymore because we're at war with them. Cool, we're conquering parts of Morocco, which is good. But now we're running into French troops in Morocco, which is not ideal. Because they have better troops than me. Fuck! Well, that might, this whole thing might have been a mistake. What is the, yeah, treaty port? Okay, it could be worse, it could be worse. Maybe we can, maybe we can beat them. Okay, because 
dropping in war exhaustion way faster than us. But we're about to drop because France is fucking conquering her shit, which is not great. Okay. Well, it is what it is. Hostile Admiral sunk a bunch of our convoys. Okay, can I escort convoys? Yeah, I can. Fuck me. Okay. Oh, this war might be a shit show. Um, but that is what happens sometimes when you take on wars. Um... Catholics. Are we gonna sink their fucking navy? Nope, even though we have. See, why are your. Oh, god damn it. Oh. Oh, we're gonna get our fucking ass kicked in this war. God damn it. Man, I thought I timed that really well, but I guess not. Um, so yeah, so that's part of what we've done at PHP is work to put politics in command, right? Because when you see the housing crisis, when you see homelessness as a phenomenon, you have like a choice to make over whether or not like, fuck the church, who's in the fridge, who's in the moderate party? Surely God wants surely God wants someone else who isn't your fucking awful Catholic party to win, right? God damn it. They're gonna fucking god damn it, those guys are gonna do really well. Fuck. Ah uh, fuck. Okay, well are we are we bolstering the trade unions? We don't have enough authority for that. Stop bolstering. the government not use not in any meaningful fucking capacity of course not okay well that's fine that's fine what if we moved to lesser what if we move to a less racist society who's calling me oh, okay that's probably no one important okay do 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 How is life, chat? Tell me all of your dreams. Tell me all of your hopes and dreams. Oh, whoops, did I click the wrong thing? Oh, I may have clicked the wrong thing. Oh, okay, sorry, hello, welcome back, Jorah. Oh, this war is going poorly. Okay, this war is going very poorly thanks to France's intervention. How do we get this party more poppin'? I don't know. What what kind of party would you like to pop, Jora? Okay, so it turns to white. Excellent question, Jora. How do we get this party more poppin? Do you want me to do a dance? Do you want me to do an ask me anything? God damn it. Okay, we're gonna have to fucking just surrender. God damn it. Well, that was an ass kicking. Okay, that's dumb. Yeah, I'm aware that we have lost prestige. Thank you, game. Fucking France. Fucking goddamn France. Okay, whatever. Okay, so now we have money and we need to fucking unlock better soldiers because we're not getting humiliated in a war again. That was awful. Um, I, yeah, that's a good question, Jora. Jora, what makes a party pop for you? Right, let's build a bunch of fucking construction centers. Jumpstart this goddamn economy because this is fucking horse. That was fucking horse shit. Horse shit. Horse shit. Wood tools and iron. Okay. Iron tools up here. Oh, it 
terms of getting Spain to pop, I have no idea, because then we just botched this fucking war. So, god damn it. Okay, so we have Seedmont, Piedmont, Sardinia as an ally now. Which I guess is useful, because they have, what, 50 battalions that can help fucking threaten France from the other side? Okay. We're gonna tank up our fucking... We are gonna tank up our fucking technology. So yeah, one of the ways that this game promotes a really, like, economistic understanding of society is, like, uh, technology and power really determine fucking everything. They determine how well you fight, and when you have shit fucking soldiers and fucking line infantry. Oh, actually, instead of building a bunch of construction hubs, maybe we should. should upgrade our shit. There we go. Steam tools, butchering tools, logging camps. Do, 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 and import a fuckload of tools. We still have a shortage of iron, really, even with all that importing. God damn it. God damn it. Okay, we got iron in. That's good. Let's dump our unproductive trade routes. Oh, did we need even the unproductive ones to keep the numbers together? That fucking sucks. Okay. Oh, and see why I don't I never clicked textile mills are we still that far backed up are we still that far fucking backed up oh we are what else is it what else happens in this book Oh yeah, so it's like a critique. One of the things he talks about in chapter two is a critique of the trade unions, right? So it's this idea that like most Marxists have this. God damn it! All right, well this is never gonna pass. Is there something wrong with my government? Yeah, I don't know. We have a legitimate government. So what is our problem? Our trade policy. Let's try to change our trade policy. So a critique of the unions, right? Because one of the things, one of the classical Marxist perspectives, which is based on like a really kind of like myopic reading of, um, based on like a really myopic reading of Lenin and the Russian Revolution is this idea that like, oh, you go where the most advanced elements of the class are. And that has like people interpret that to mean, uh, People interpret that to mean like you go to the most unionized people, you go to the best organized strata of the working class, but that's like very frequently not the best strategy. Because um, the truth is like where you should be go, like trade union consciousness, like people who are conscious of their need to unionize, like unionizing is great. But all it can ever do is like improve conditions in that individual workplace. It doesn't automatically lead people towards a revolutionary consciousness, which is really unfortunate, but is like inescapable because a lot of people will have as part of their basic interests, like trying to take care of themselves and their fucking bread and butter demands. And if they get them, they would almost some of them would literally rather quit fighting than potentially risk them you know what i mean so like rather than look to like the privileged strata especially here in the american imperial core what we can and should look to 
can kind of see like all of our little buildings now as these factories build and stuff. Um, what we should be looking to is like the most oppressed and the people who are the most, who have the least to lose from a change in the order, right? And he's like very critical of trying to like adjust revolutionary rhetoric towards voters or people who are like invested in um, towards voters or people who are like invested in maintaining the status quo because the reality is that like maintaining the status quo is n the people who have an interest in maintaining the status quo are not the people who you can look to to want to overthrow the system um, and they're fundamentally counter-revolutionary so it's like when we're looking at like the housing crisis in America right like people who own maybe one property might have an interest in like monopoly capitalists who own thousands and thousands of apartments like not owning them anymore but <clears throat> their interest is really against free housing because if housing is free if some housing is free it lowers the value of all housing that's not free right and when your property is a fucking investment you don't ever want to see its value drop. Um, so yeah, it is a lot about like which strata are revolutionary and which strata are not. Um, and how you cannot count on three fucking years. God damn it, Spain is backwards. Okay, fuck. Okay, uh, intensive ad will be good. Okay, we need to build more universities. Queen intervenes. Yeah, that will actually be great. Chance. Okay. Ba -da 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 -da. So yeah, one of the things I think, one of the things about this, about gaming itself, because I watched this video called Design Doc about the way that video games are made, right? And it breaks video gaming down into three layers. Uh, the mechanics, the, the mechanics, the dynamics, and the aesthetics. Uh, so mechanics are the numbers. It's like all of these little ticks. It's all of these little numbers. It's all of this bullshit happening. Uh, the dynamics are the way that the player engages with them, right? So it's like, not just clicking these buttons, but it's like, what do these buttons represent? Like, how am I supposed to be thinking about them? How do you want the player to think about them? And then aesthetics is the squiffiest one. It's like, how do the mechanics and the, how does, how do the mechanics and the dynamics make the player feel while they're engaging with them, right? So in a game like this, you're try the point of the game design is to try to get the player to like feel like they are part of um, to feel like they're really running a country and to feel like they're guiding a nation through its politics, economy, and its warfare, right? Um, and it's interesting how shifting the mechanics and the dynamics can change the way the player feels. So like, for example, adding this like private construction fucking cue, right? Cre rather than have everything go through the player and like by adding this as a mechanic, it changes the dynamic where now you have to kind of manage your construction cue between the public and the private sector and it creates this feeling that the private sector is this autonomous thing right and it changes how you look at different economic systems within the game because now they change and alter the balance between the private and the public fucking construction queue and it's a way to model the real and why are we so poor Construction goods are expensive, and our government way construction goods are expensive as shit. And we're spending too much money on iron because we got an iron shortage, which is why we're building iron mines. So maybe everybody could fucking climb off my dick for a minute. About the goddamn iron shortages. Fuck. Does anybody have any questions or 
thoughts or things they want to say. I guess I can take a minute and do a pit break real quick and just kind of talk about PHP. Um, so for those of you who don't know or who are just tuning in, um, this stream is a product of the People's Housing Project where basically we like do political education, talk about the way that theory influences our work, tie it to different games. Um, and if you want to support what we do and help us continue to build tiny shelters for homeless folks, um, definitely check out the links in our bio. Uh, I'm going to take a two minute break, but I will be right back. Ba -da -ba -ba, and we are back. So we are just working on a very economistic project of working to balance our market and our fucking trade flows and shit while we work to boost the economy legally. We are working to improve our fucking inflows and outflows. Hello. What the fuck? What is that emoji, Jora? What does that even mean? Like, what is that? little ghost thing. Oh fuck, let's turn the speed up. This is taking forever. Okay, so we're building iron mines here so we could try to fucking lower our iron shortage. We're building a university here because tech is taking forever to discover and the fact that we are behind France in tech is the part of the big reason we lost that war. Our government is contested. Why? lowers the speed of passage of stuff. No, that's fine. It's okay if it's a little contested. That is fine. So yeah, so now the capitalists are building a, chair, a fucking furniture manufacturer over here and wasting 20 of my construction points because really what the economy needs is iron and you should not trust the goddamn capitalists to fucking do anything because all they care about is profit. They don't care about cohesion. Iron's still expensive, so we'll just kind of keep tanking up our iron mines and our logging camps while we wait for our fucking technology to improve. It's always iron tools and wood. The history of humanity is iron tools and wood. And then building this fucking furniture factory is just going to suck more fucking wood away from the economy. Ugh. Okay, so Egypt is beating up the Ottoman Empire, stealing stuff, pretend stealing land from the Ottomans who are getting real squishy over here. Fuck. Losing that Morocco war really set us back. Losing that Morocco war sucked, but that's fine. 
That's fine. That's fine. Fuck the landowners. No one gives a shit. They're in the way. Ba 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 ba. All right, Hanover is improving relations with us, which is fine. Maybe they're trying to make friends. All right, because we don't want to be taking on too much debt, and we're spending a shitload on fucking... Ooh, what is this? An efficient Okay, so we just unlocked intensive agriculture, which means, which is basically like a way to improve the farming. Number go up, which is good. This will make number go up. Three years, god damn it. Is there anything that's gonna fucking be faster than that? Fuck, fuck, everything is fucked. Everything is fucked. I don't need that. I know. Oh, everything is fucked. Okay. Uh, fuck. Our society is still so backwards. Don't know shit. And we just raised. Why are the taxes? Why is the economy? the treasury doing so bad because we're spending too much money on construction goods because iron is very expensive still that's why oh and then we're not queuing up more things input goods how is there still a fucking iron shortage even though we've built like seven or eight iron mines like what is going on expensive military goods artillery yeah everything's expensive on the market Okay, so do we acquiesce to their demands and piss off the rural folk? Yeah, it's fine. I don't care what the fucking rural folk think. Not really, not in the long run. Nor can you. Alright, so two more trade routes have become unproductive. <sighs> Does anybody have any questions or thoughts about PHP or any of this? Because I can just keep rambling or ranting. Why don't we have more iron? Arts Academy, yeah. See, we don't need fucking art. We need iron and wood, bro. Okay. Protectionism's chance is up. The landlords want to prove. See, this is exactly how, like... Oh, see, that's interesting. So part of the reason their attraction is low is because they got their asses kicked in that civil war. Minus 46%. So this is where we're at, I mean, where it's like, the mechanic is just that number, but the dynamic is basically like, hey, their power is real fucked up. And then the aesthetic is like, oh yeah, no, there's an incentive to beat these clowns in a fucking revolutionary struggle. And, like, the way that the game, the way that games are built in many ways mirrors the, like, reality itself, because, like, just like the game is fundamentally undergirded by mechanics, reality is fundamentally undergirded by the economy. But really, just like in real life, what controls the course of civilization is player input and like dynamic engagement. The same thing that shifts the economy and fundamentally advances struggle and civilization is like political intervention and a choice, right? Because one of uh, JMP's points in this book is that like class is not something it's not like an essence there's no like you can't there's no essential working class it's not like people are inherently working class class position is something subjectivized and theorized and like 
because it is an analysis of the class, there's a degree to which it always inherently comes from outside the like the class itself, right? Because like even if it's a working class intellectual, the very attempt to categorize a group of people is kind of like a political and scientific declaration. You know what I mean? It's like this is a thing and it is not other things. And how you choose to define a class, how you choose to define a category, all these things are like fucking full of political and social implications, right? Uh, I'm so tired of our fucking enactment chance not going well. Okay, France. France is in a shit, okay. France is not in any war. See, my goal, maybe at some point I can hope for France to get in some kind of fucking war. And then... Oh, here we go. Okay, where should we declare interest? Probably over here, so we can start importing. Do, 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 do. Cha, cha. Do, 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 do. Tools and iron are still expensive. Okay, well, let's... Ba -da -da -da. And then maybe one day our tech will be better and our fucking population will have more fucking literacy and then we can do something. Ah! Okay, well, let's see. Can we, can we, can we import anything at a profit? We can. We can import some tools. Can we import anything else? Porcelain. Our iron is still expensive as fuck. We can import a little bit of iron. Guess we can import something. Alright. Do 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 do. Yeah, so it's all about, life is about putting politics in command, and that's kind of what we did, you know what I mean? It's like at PHP, it's like rather than wait for the government or civilization to like produce... So yeah, rather than like wait for the city to provide things or the private sector to solve homelessness, it takes like a conscious political intervention, you know what I mean? And rather than go along with the... God damn it, is this fucking law ever going to pass? Rather than like wait for fucking laws to pass or like deal with like the private sector, what we did at PHP is just kind of start moving and just start taking action, making a conscious political... Uh, making a conscious political intervention into uh, uh, the housing debate. What's up, Chesscraft? Um, stream a few weeks ago was about free play versus instrumental play. What is this? So, as a simulation game, it like it has some aspects of both, right? And that's one of the cool things about sandbox games is it's like there's not really a goal in Victoria 3. Like, you can treat it as, like, a conquer the world sim. You can treat it as, like, a get the most prestige game. You can treat it as, like, a uh, liberation sim of, like, how can I make the most egalitarian society? Um, but really, like, it's... Uh, 
And there's instrumental ways of achieving those goals, but just like in real life, this game is very much a, like, you set your own goal, and there is not really a wrong way to play it, because if you don't, if you're willing to roll with however it goes out, or however the outcomes occur, like, you don't have to win every war in order to have fun. Like, if you're trying to conquer the world, it's really like, is there a point? And it's like, I, yeah, that's a really interesting question. And it's like, so some of the features of instrumental play it shares, right? It's like, it's good for your G, like, it's like, just by tracking these numbers, right? It kind of implies that, like, you want your GDP to go up. Like, you want your literacy to go up. Like, there are rewards for your standard of living going up, right? So just by measuring these things, it creates the implication of instrumental goals. Uh, but the truth is that, like, there's no... There's nothing making you rate, take your GDP up. You can be stagnant because this game has, just like an MMO or revolution, this game has a degree to which you can set your own fucking goals and set your own... Fuck you, Morocco. You want to start a fucking embargo with me? I swear to God, as soon as I... As soon as my goddamn military doesn't suck so fucking bad... Okay, we have to build more universities. We have to build more universities. We have to raise literacy. We have to raise literacy around the fucking around Spain. We just have to do it. Because if we want to win wars... Because right now I have decided that one of my instrumental goals is fucking winning the next goddamn war against Morocco. So in order to do that, we need to have better tech. And in order to get that, we have to have fucking more universities to do research. So like... They're instrumental goals, but it is very much a free play game. I hope that answers your question. Chesscraft. Also, hello, and thank you for being here. Okay, great. So now my alliance is fucked because Piedmont Sardinia became Italy, so that's just great. That's just great. That's just great. Um. <clears throat> So yeah, so unlike, so like life, this is a free play game, unlike, and unlike Revolution, because Revolution, like we were talking about last time, like, has a goal, right? Alright, moderate party, one re-election, so that's fine. Who's the progressive party? Can I bring the Intella? Alright, you can have a shit government. Um, cause yeah, revolution has a instrumental goal. Like the goal is to overthrow the capitalist mode of production and introduce a socialist or communist mode of production. One that prioritizes human need rather than private greed. Um, and one that makes it's like production choices and like labor choices on human need rather than private greed. Um. And one of the things, it's interesting, because one of the things he talks about in his other book, The Communist Necessity, is that, like, part of the reason why he describes the communist movement as a necessity is, like, it's not a historical necessity, like, it's destined to happen. It's a historical necessity if we're going to keep human civilization functioning, right? Like, if you want a society that isn't dying from climate change you need to have a planned economy and a planned transition to a uh a fully like you need to have a planned transition to a green economy you know what i mean and there's no way that capitalism is going to plan that transition to there's no way that capital oh my god I just want this to pass 50 I'm so fucking tired of the math not giving me the fucking law change oh stupid okay anyway um, it's like the reason why communism is a necessity is because the only thing that's really gonna bring about the end of white supremacy the only thing that's really gonna bring about the end of imperialism the only thing that's gonna bring about the end of environmental catastrophe is 
a communist movement and a com like a conscious communist intervention into society that will organize members of like the most conscious and revolutionarily aware members of the working class and mobilize them towards that revolutionary goal because it is inconceivable for like our children to have a future or for like society to keep functioning without a fundamental change in how things are produced, right? Like we all know that war is never going to end as long as defense companies profit off of it. We know that like the food system's never going to change as long as like the meat and agriculture industries are in charge of us. We know that fucking banking is never going to get better. And Jesus Christ, like, look at the fucking banking sector this past week. Like, Silicon Valley, like, two, we had the two, the second and third largest bank failures in United States history in the last fucking week. And capital's trying to tell you that everything's fine and that the next Great Depression isn't fucking around the corner when it absolutely is. Um, why are we losing money now? Government goods. Oh, because we're spending more on paper for universities and wages for universities. Unacceptable government. Ugh. I don't want to let the rural folk into government, bro. I don't. I would so much rather have the intelligentsia. Can I not do laws or does it fuck? Okay. Uh, can we go back to bolstering you? Will that help? Let's try you, and then can we fuck this, bro? Can we change any of the other power? God damn it. Nope, that's a bad government. Oh, that's a bad government. We can't pass any of the laws we want to pass. So let, oh no, wrong one. Let's kick you out and put you in. Some of the people are going to be very upset with us over this because we're trying to do a power. We're trying to get rid of the monarchy, so some of them are going to be very upset. Oh, and there's going to be a civil war. Oh, we just had a civil war and probably shouldn't try to do that again, so that's fine. Intelligentsia in the fucking government! God damn it! Why can I not have. Oh, because I have to put the R. That's fine, whatever, dude. That's fine. Can we change? So the Catholic Church is pissed, but not enough to quit the government, which is good, because we can make a small gain in freedom of consciousness and a small disempowerment of the church, which would be great. It would be great. Does anybody have any other questions about the game or Maoism or the party? Because basically the argument that I took away from this book is like what we can and should continue to do is make these conscious and explicit political interventions in the housing crisis, right? Because when you know that like, for example, like the communist, for a great example of the communist necessity, right? Is the idea that like the only way that, uh, the only way that like the housing crisis is ever going to be solved is by taking the production of housing out of the hands of the free market and putting it in the hands of people like putting in the democratic control of all of the people here or all of the people in society right so we're suppressing 
Yeah, because as long as like the private market is in charge of like providing and producing housing, like it's always going to produce homelessness. Like some people being on the streets because they can't afford housing is definitionally part of the private the the private allocation of housing and the capitalist mode of production. So if we're ever going to solve the housing crisis, all of housing has to be taken into public ownership. And part of what we're doing at PHP is like, by giving folks shelters on public land, like we're helping people claim public land and building a direct challenge to the city government over like, who gets to decide who lives on public land? Is it the working class and the people who live there? Or is it the city government that helps the wealthy produce this crisis? And like, because if and because our government is unable to solve this crisis, it falls on like individual working class people and individual parties and like organizations with a clear theoretical and political line making an intervention into the situation. And political here doesn't mean like a uh, voting. Political here means like a, a, a philosophical and partisan choice about what should happen and a partisan argument because rather than like because you know it's implied in voting of like oh my candidates arguments are right and what they think is what should happen but the truth is that like there's lots of ways to do politics including directly on the street and that's a lot of what we try to do with the people's housing project um, and if you want to support that work you can follow the links in our bio uh, the best way to help is to give money every month on Patreon. And then you can keep up to date with our organization on our Instagram because we're up to a lot of good shit. Um, power and class. Because, yeah, it's not just like... It's like another great example of like class determination, right? When we go back to that like civil war that we had at the beginning of the game is like... Their status as landowners isn't just, like, their class position isn't just determined by their ownership of the means of production. Like, it's also determined by the fact that, you know, they own slaves. The fact that right now, like, Spain is a national supremacist country where, like, if you're not Spanish or of Spanish descent, you're discriminated against. And they're still very, like, the church... And the small, the petty bourgeoisie are still very opposed to ending racial segregation. So, like the small business owners who enjoyed privileges over the slaves 20 years ago in Spain are still pissy and holding on to that and don't want to, like, sully the Spanish bloodline or whatever. Arrest him. Fuck! That's fine. Italy wants to be our defensive ally. That's cool. So if it fucks with either of us, we'll be friends. What are we doing our fucking tech, bro? Four weeks left. God damn it. This takes for really fucking ever. Cool. Does anybody have any thoughts or questions about the People's Housing Project? Because this usually winds up around 8 o'clock. been a little quiet tonight but I'm really grateful to everybody who has been here and who is here and Jora and Brizity for monitoring the chat and asking good questions and being my friends in general skirmish infantry there we go okay because that's where shrapnel artillery is You're welcome, Cheesecraft. How's life treating you, mobile artillery? Thank you for being here. It is greatly appreciated. Ammunition shortage. Oh yeah, because we have to build ammo munitions plants, which we can't do until we have concussion caps. Who produces ammunition? Can 
end up destroying the patriarchy. Um, not in this game, sadly. But we're, we destroyed slavery, which was good, and won a whole civil war over it. But unfortunately, women still don't have a lot of rights in Spain. And because the landowners and the Catholic Church fucking suck, it's going to be real hard to change because the Catholics have a lot of fucking clout in Spain, as was historically accurate. Yeah, and we're not going to end up disempowering the church because the debate went poorly. Fuck, everything is stupid. Alright, let's change. Nice, okay. Oh, because it's because we stopped building the stuff. We'll get them next time. We will get them next time, Cheesecraft. Chase Chesscraft. Anyway, I love all of you. All right, it is 8 o'clock, so I think that is where we're going to call it for tonight. <clears throat> but if you like what we are doing, if you enjoy the content that we create, if you enjoy the community that we build, uh, definitely like and definitely follow us here on twitch and help us get to 50 followers uh you can sign up to volunteer in the google form in our instagram and then yeah we are up to a lot of good stuff you can check our meetup page i know doesn't that look great jora yeah so yeah check our meetup page and yeah if you want to donate to help us build shelters like the one you see in the picture you can do so through our GoFundMe or our Patreon, both of which are great ways to get involved. Um, so that.